Hi guys and welcome to a new video. Previously on the channel I picked up this old motorcycle carrier, fixed it up, treated all the rust and made it look like new in preparation for picking up a motorbike project. The bike in question is this little Honda CG125. It was customised by a company in London many years ago now and it's been off the road for seven years. Over the past few episodes I've been preparing the motorbike ready for an MOT in the UK which is an annual vehicle inspection just to make sure that it's roadworthy. If you're interested to see the work that's had to go in to prepare this bike ready for the MOT, you can check out the previous videos and I'll put a link to those in the description below. In this week's video, we'll be taking the bike for its MOT to see whether it's ready. The front brake felt a little bit spongy still, so maybe there's a little bit of air left in there. I've cable tied the brake lever overnight so that way, if any air is in here, hopefully it would have worked its way up and out through the top. That's the theory anyway, whether it works or not, I'm not sure. Let's cut that off. A couple of you quite rightly said I'll need reflectors on the back of the bike. So I've got these little number plate ones and hopefully this will get through the MIT. So you literally peel and stick them on the number plate. Put one there and one there. This piece here is what holds the saddle down. So loosen this off, and then this slides up and off of here. And then we take the loading rack off from underneath. That's just a couple of bolts. And then this ramp just slots in here. I had to remove the spare wheel for now because the wheel interfered with the handlebars. Um, so I need to move this bracket up a little bit. So now we've got the bike up here, we get this saddle piece, put that back on. Push the bike as far forward as it goes. And then this locks behind the tank. We can tighten that up. We'll take our loading ramp off here, bolt it back up underneath. I don't trust that this is enough. We're not going very far for the MOT, but I want to put one of these ratchet straps on it as well. I've got this ratchet strap on the ladder here, and I'm just feeding it around the bike across here, just so that hopefully it doesn't fall off. That's not going anywhere. In the garage we've got a few more things to do on the bike before we can represent it for the MOT. I took it down there and the guy sat on the bike to do his preliminary checks and straight away he said there were a few problems with it. First of all this grip's loose. Well I don't think it's that loose it's not going to come off in a hurry it's not going to slip off you know. I don't think that would be an MOT failure but he seemed to think otherwise. The VIN plate is missing off of the chassis of the bike and the numbers here and the letters for the chassis number are powder coated over so you can't read them clearly. He said I could either scrape the powder coating off which I really don't want to do that to expose the chassis number or get a plate made up so I thought there's no way I'm just going to scrape the powder coating off this bike and expose it to the elements um, when I could just get a little VIN plate made up. Ah, the steering. So he said he turned it from lock to lock and this fork here was touching the tank on this side. So I've adjusted the steering stop here to stop that hitting the tank so it doesn't now. That hits the steering lock on that side and that hits the stop on that side so it doesn't touch the tank. Basically anything that interferes with the steering could count as an MOT failure. He seemed like a really nice guy, but you just, I just want an MIT on it. Come on. 
Another little issue that he pointed out was that the, the brake pads weren't making enough contact with the disc, um, the bracket. I stupidly mounted it upside down, didn't I? Because I moved it from the left hand side to the right hand side, I got it the wrong way up and it wasn't quite making enough contact with the disc. So anyway, I've got this bracket off and I've got some thicker alley over here so we can get the spacing right as well. I'm going to remake this bracket out of the thicker alley. One of you guys suggested that it may be better to have a thicker bracket. Now I'm going to use a nice coarse 40 grit flat disc to get that shape around there. set up the pillar drill for drilling these holes out. So I drill these out to 7mm, drill these out to 8mm and then tap those with my 8mm. Yeah, it should be a 6.75mm drill bit. I haven't got that. We're going to go for 7 Let's round it up, that'll be fine. Out. The bracket that was on here originally is 2.4 mil, and the one we've just made is now 9.2 mil. So it'll be much stronger, and that should help with the brakes. I mean, that's not oh, easy to get off. I think that guy is being a little bit pedantic, to be honest. But, if he insists, let's whack a little bit of silicon on here. Another thing the MOT tester suggested is that we move this somewhere else on the bike because again it does encroach in the steering area um, so it could be classed as an obstruction with this hanging off of it. I'm going to move the ignition barrel from here to under here. I'm basically just rerouting the wires back for the ignition switch. So I've taken all these looms apart. We only need four wires, so I'm just taking them back now. And then we can mount the ignition switch up in here. The ignition switch will be mounted horizontally underneath the seat so that it's protected from any water ingress. I think this metal here on the frame is actually thick enough to drill and tap it.
that's our ignition switch in the new place, so let's just check make sure it works. Perfect. I've checked all the lights and everything, and they work. Um, so that's another job done. Here we have a new VIN plate. I'll put a link in the description to where I got this if you need to get one. The VIN plate has to be permanently fixed to the bike's frame so that it can't be easily removed. It can't be a sticker, it can't be screwed on or bolted on because that can be removed easily. So I opted to weld it to the bike's frame, but you could also rivet it. There we go, I've just put two little spot welds here and here to hold this plate to the chassis. I think we're ready to represent it. Let's go again. Now here I have the MOT test certificate. And what do we reckon? Pass or fail? Drum roll please. And it's a fail. Do not drive until repaired. Dangerous defects. The stop lamp does not illuminate by the operation of both brake controls. The front, the front brake lever light not working. Okay. So it hasn't got a switch on the front brake, and I've ordered one, so we'll have to fit that. I didn't realise it needed the front and back brake switches. It's got one on the foot pedal here, so that brings on the brake light, but it also needs one on the front. How on earth this bike had an MOT previously, I do not know. And for our repair immediately, major defects, we have the headlamp aim projected beam image obviously incorrect. No beam pattern and the stop lamp lens defective such that the emitted light is adversely affected. White light in centre of lamp lens, melted. So that is a major defect, that little speck of white in the middle. And there's a really quick and easy fix for that. So let's sort that out. It's always handy to have a little bit of lens tape in the toolbox just in case you get issues like this on MOTs. This isn't the first time I've had this problem. I had it with my Suzuki carry van a while back where I had a little crack in the lens and they picked me up on this and that's why I've got some lens tape already. I've just cut this little circle of lens tape. Just peel that off. And stick that here in the middle. The front brake light switch is turned up and that just bolts on here. It's a pressure switch so that when you squeeze the front brake, it makes the switch. Um, and then obviously we've just got to wire this back to the rear brake light. Now this could get really messy, so I've got to work quickly. Okay. There we go, let's top that up with brake fluid. We can just check to make sure that this switch is doing what we want it to using a multimeter. It's just on the continuity setting there. So we just put our multimeter across the switch. It's open circuit at the moment, and if we squeeze a brake lever, there we go. Now we just need to find the wire that goes back to the rear brake light and a feed wire. Let's take the tank off and see what we've got. I did wonder what this green wire with the cross hatching on it was, and that, I believe, goes back to the brake light. Um, so this was originally connected to the front brake switch. So if we plug that one in, 
and this is a 12 volt from the battery. Apologies, I meant to say it's a 12 volt ignition live as opposed to a permanent live from a battery. We're gonna have to recrimp this, but let's just test it. Ignition on. Squeeze the front brake and it brings a brake light on, perfect. And so does the foot pedal. So that one and that one. That's what you want. I've got the bike facing this board so we can have a look at the projected beam image, which is obviously incorrect. Check the wiring of this headlight and it's all correct. It's got a H4 bulb in here and it's got three wires. One wire is for the low beam, one wire is for the high beam and one wire is for the earth. I think I know what the problem is. This bulb, I believe, should be orientated this way up so this tab on a H4 bulb should be facing upwards um, and when we put it in to the holder it goes that way around it won't fit in the other way the writing because that's the top will be upside down on the lens but we're going to have to put it in upside down for the MOT and I think that should sort the problem out. It turns out the hardest job out of all the repairs we've had to do was getting the lens back in upside down. I had to use this longer threaded bolt to get it on because I just could not clamp it down enough to get the original bolt in there. At least I've had a nice bit of practice loading the bike on the van and making sure it's tied down properly, nice and secure. And we've done quite a few little journeys with this now. And I quite like this system of tying it down across here. there it got caught on the road when I went over a bump it's a bit too low to the ground so I'm gonna have to work out where else I can mount this after the third trip down to the test center here I have the test certificate and I can safely say that it's passed with flying colors this time no advisories no minors no majors that's a solid pass so I'm pleased with that it turns out that the headlight lens needs to be upside down to correct the bulb or the beam pattern. Um, the H4 headlight bulbs need to go a certain way up and it, it was obviously incorrect. So the writing's upside down on there at the moment and I don't really like that. I've ordered a new headlight to replace this one, um, a clear lens so you get a better field of vision at night time. I know the yellow looks pretty cool. I do like the yellow lens, but I think it'll be a bit safer to have a clear lens in there. And hopefully, when the new one turns up, it will have the H4 bulb up the right way inside there. I now need to just tax the bike, insure it, and then put my L plates on and we can take it out for a spin. But that won't be in this video because I appreciate this video is a lot longer than it was supposed to be with all the little repairs that we've had to do. So I hope you found this video interesting and it's given you some ideas and tips for when you're buying a bike, what to look for, make sure it's got the bin plate on there, um, check all your steering locks, suspension, etc, etc. Um, and yeah, don't buy a cafe racer. <laughs> if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel if you're not already subscribed. And if you click the little alarm bell, you'll get notifications when I post new videos. It's completely free to subscribe and it just helps the channel to grow. And thanks to everybody that's already following the channel and who watches the videos. I really appreciate it. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys. Take care.